way back we've been friends since way back made in since way back how it's been since way back since back then can't change that we've been Change the movie. I feel like there's a couple of changes you already see. One was Cyborg's dad, for sure. Yeah, like that. We didn't get to see any of things like uh, that. The Flash um, is going to get a lot more time. the dark side. Yeah, the dark yeah, side stuff like is really looks like it's time. just going to be dark side in place of the war stuff that we had before so far. Yeah. At, but yeah. hopefully uh, they're saving other dark side scenes for mm. later because they got four hours so like all these reveals that we get here hopefully are not the best reveals of the series you know what i mean <laughs> that's what i'm hoping yeah, for yeah no that's what i'm hoping for is that this will kind of put them back on the track of what they you know originally trying to plan for it was a big kind of event too um yeah. but you know I, I from what i heard is yeah like you said flash has a little bit more screen time but from what i heard i guess he Zack snyder's like doing some new power up for him in this movie I, I think i don't know if i read i i don't know that maybe somewhere. maybe i, I, I heard there was I some remember, flash I thought I read something stuff about that and some other stuff and obviously they've got the flash going forward with uh that's what i heard that's what i heard some flashpoint stuff uh and then they've got the flash movie going forward with ben affleck supposedly right now as with Batman. affleck yeah, yeah right which is interesting we'll see how their, their cinematic that. universe rebuilds itself uh, especially with the re- what's going to be the release of Marvel the Stage Matt Reeves. 4. Oh, oh just okay, like yeah. in comparison, because oh, it's going to be a mean, very yeah. different kind of like uh, dichotomy, even from before, where there were like two universes building at the same time. Because mm-hmm. right now... And what's up, Leo? Sorry, we had hey, to ask sorry, yeah. <laughs> Leo wrote under yeah, the comments. Yeah, we're back. It's been a couple weeks. We had... I was in the mountains, and then I gotta go to Vegas next week, but I will, I'll be back by Sunday, so. And then I gotta go to Atlanta, and I don't know how long I'll be there. <laughs> the business is booming. And the but, business uh, so, is business. <laughs> <laughs> but you were saying um, about the... So, for the comparison, uh, and this is no slight on Marvel, but they've really hit a difficult point in their filmmaking career as a universe. Mm-hmm. Because everything, basically, from not Iron Man forward, but Thor forward, and even kind of Iron Man, but from basically like the first or second Marvel movie builds into the final culmination of Endgame and uh, everything else. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that that is a very big peak, that they're now going to have to write stories that are going to still make people interested in these characters without having Did, that and even if they build a new big universe or whatever they end up doing i just think it's going to be very difficult for them at this time this is like a, a proving point for a movie franchise yeah where they're going to either have to take a new direction they're gonna have to do something new and that's no slight on like saying all move all marvel movies are the same i'm just saying that now that you've reached the end of this big ass saga you're gonna be in for something new Whereas now DC is on a totally, totally different path of having like <laughs> tried to make a multiverse and then have it drop to crap and then breathe back into even their original multiverse while they have their other side stuff going stuff, on. Kind right. of sides, yeah, yeah. Stuff well, on, yeah. They, I mean, it's got its own connection. And to be fair, so does Marvel, just not all connected into one franchise when you consider, I don't know if you've seen New Mutants yet. No, in... <sighs> Sadly, I you know I heard it didn't do so well. Is what I heard. Uh, I guess um, it might not have. I heard there was some real stuff that bothered one of the creators. I think it was uh, like, no, not like It was Nick Nick Hoyle. No, it might have been Lifefield because it I think I've seen him. Was uh, it his, his Twitter was his Twitter was popping yesterday, and <laughs> uh, Mutants author or uh, creator name misspelled and you know he's always got something to say <laughs> to be fair um, you know i, I heard the, the one that stole the show was magic and but magic, then other than that I, I felt like they're the the good thing for me and obviously i think it's going to be different for different people but it will bring some people to these movies at a minimum is that they had a lot of decently big name actors yeah in there the was yeah star from stranger things he was also in i think american horror story but i'm not sure Mm-hmm. And then the star from Game of Thrones, and then even the the Doctor is in a couple big things. Yeah, I've seen her a couple of times. Right, I was she's trying to not. Out where I've I seen can't her. remember exactly, but I always see her around. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. I think that the 
for me, trying not to spoil anything, uh, I really enjoyed Magic. She's probably the most characterized. And I think mm-hmm. that isn't a result of any scripting and stuff. Maybe there could have been a little bit more from some of the other characters. But the problem is, in the comics, Magic is also Magic is also the most standout character in yeah. the group. Mm-hmm. This yeah. isn't new. Yeah. Magic is always the most interesting new mutant, bar none. Mm-hmm. Like, she's just got a really interesting backstory. Her character is very aggressive. A lot of the comic people like her. Yeah, there's a lot of people. She was super nice for a couple times. She never, I don't think, I think she got her own comic once. Maybe not. I'll have to double check. Um, yeah, I'm not too, you know what? I think she did actually. There, that that was before I started reading them, but I'm pretty sure she had like a little four issue miniseries. Yeah, Yeah, it was nothing big. No, no, no. And it didn't do well because she's not a very good continuous character on her own. She's a better. In interactive character with the X Men, right? Yeah. She she um, does well surrounded. And what I will say is, in this movie, the the actress, her name was Anya something, and I can't remember it. But the actress yes. very much impressed I, me. I seen the sneak peek of her, and uh, it was right before she jumps into the portal, you know, to go fight the the bear. And because uh, they showed it online, that's the only sneak peek I seen. I was like, oh, this looks pretty cool. Like that 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 you know looked pretty awesome, but. Um, again, I don't know if it's just because there's not enough people going to the movies right now and just I, like, you know, there's not I enough you know, that, really critique out there. There's also the thing that my father kind of put out to me that I didn't even think about because I felt like it was billed as a horror movie. That's the, what I was going to ask too. How was the horror aspect uh, of it? Personally, and you know me, I, I'm at least susceptible to jump scares. I wasn't all that impressed with the horror aspects. I was. Saying, it was. I don't really, it was okay. <sighs> I think their big problem wasn't scening or staging or thing. They had a little bit of lack of some of the timing. I think that makes for a good horror for the the, the movement of scenes, just quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was hoping for more of like lighting. a psychological horror than a it, jump scare kind of. I think horror the other movie. problem is so like for example, my mother, she thought it was scary, but. <laughs> yeah i mean she uh, but i think the other problem easily. oh yeah she is uh it, it isn't is it? she's interesting is. She, yeah. she doesn't watch her she's like don't even show me she she will <laughs> and she has it's interesting how some do and some don't scare but i think a lot of the terror goes away because one you as a as us as comic book watchers know they're not that, supposed to be horror yeah yeah it's we know it's all in danny's head and even in the movie my mother is is very much like oh, i mean yeah i think they pointed out very well without like giving anything away they're like they're very leading into the fact that this is all from danny okay um, okay so, and that's not right. to say that there's not an underlying plot which was really good but just as a like if you were to just judge it as a horror movie eh, maybe like a six Okay, I mean that's fine. I just want to, but yeah, that's just as a horror movie. Now, yeah. as a movie, movie, I really enjoyed a lot of it. The acting, I thought, once again, wow. I heard magic, the, the actors were good. The yeah, actors the actor were really were good. good. They they characterized their characters really good, which is weird to say. But the people who played their characters, with maybe the exception of Sunspot, who was a little less even dynamic in it, and then a lot of people were complaining about him being whitewashed. Even though that guy is Brazilian who's playing him, I think. <laughs> Even my brother was like, yeah, I saw that. And his name's like Henrique something. I was like, Henrique. He, he doesn't look very white to me when I see him in the trailer. I mean, he, he doesn't pretty... look – he's, he's light-skinned, but he's not – Yeah. He, he I... doesn't have the features, you know what I'm saying? They don't look yeah, like okay. me. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, and not to be any, to, to do anything but that. But that was just an interesting part that he was probably the least characterized – Except for maybe even Danny. Danny, I think that was the other thing that maybe drew away from the movie is it was similar to Captain Marvel, only in this aspect, that the main character didn't always make me feel, uh, em- didn't always make me empathize with them or like make me want to root for them. Not to say I rooted mm-hmm. against them, just like I felt like they once again didn't go out of their way all the time. Sometimes they did, especially near the start some places, and... It touches on some interesting subjects and and concepts that aren't really covered in other non PG. You know what I mean? They talk about different things that aren't covered. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I'm still overall, gonna go check it, was, it out. It was I just, pretty good. I liked it. You know, I just I, been hearing. You know, yeah. People or, or if I had to throw. rate it, I'd probably rate it maybe an eight and a half out of ten. Okay. I maybe need That's to watch okay. it again. I did need to like stop myself at the end of the movie and be like, all right, 
do I like Did this you really because mean, it's a good movie because, or because well, I haven't seen a movie in three? Yes. That's what I was to say. Or and, is because you've just been waiting for this movie too for the longest time. Oh, like, God. I yeah, that to too. Good. <laughs> no, for sure. I, I uh, do that all the time. You know, the ABP oh, yeah. movie. It was shit, but I, I, myself, I loved it because I, I wanted it. it to be good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I wanted no, to and there's some that they like. No matter how bad they're, like, I got series like that TV series where it's just like, look, I know it's bad, but I like it. But <laughs> right. this, I don't feel like was on that. I feel like, especially dialogue wise, this had the good, a good sense of writing, and it did what it did do well was change the atmosphere of the movie, so that okay. there was a contrast between like light scenes and dark scenes. Uh, there was a decent amount of comedy, which I think is it necessary. For dark the, the whole trailers I was seeing. So, it wasn't. Okay. It they got they do they do a good job. Just like any good. Uh, I mean, even going back to the classic, Michael Myers, crazy, you know, all that stuff with the exclusion of all the way back in like Night of the Living Dead stuff. Mm-hmm. That you would have comedy. You know what I mean? You'd have some playful romp between teens or some dumb prank or something. You know, there's always something going on that. Yeah funny on the side so that when the horror happens it's more impactful yeah uh the story was really good in my opinion the way it was written okay and it tied in well with some of the already existing Did, fox sony stuff no well, i was gonna say is it kind of its own it ties in with the fox sony movie. stuff okay that's about it but it doesn't look it like it doesn't they look were like they were playing no i think disney. that was i think they started making that and scripting it before they did any of the disney stuff so it has i know no they real... said they didn't really change anything with it so no and i don't believe that it did or that they ever had the intention to uh it doesn't so. look or feel like they've made any like attempts it very much feels like it's based in Just the sony a... x-men universe okay if okay. i had to put it in a specific universe or timeline i'd say the old man logan timeline Okay. Not at the time period, just that timeline based okay. on stuff. And it's not no big real like reveal or whatever. No. Uh but it's just they they talk what about. they were doing with that. And I think right. they say it in the trailers too. They're like, "What about the X-Men?" And so, you know, they're, they're X-Men. So, okay, so they do bring a little bit of that up in yeah. there. Okay. And I think there were uh, those in the trailer too. So, I don't know if I don't think that's a spoiler. But uh it's pretty <laughs> good. Uh what comics have you been reading this week? Uh I have not been catching anything on comic. You know, I did actually think I read something. I can't remember what it was though. Um, I was trying to read the uh, Batman Three Jokers because that came out. Ah, this week, yes. And I have not gotten a chance to read it. I read it's... like maybe two, three pages, um, and I, you know, I had to go do something else. <laughs> so it was I kind of finished yeah, the rest no, of it. it was okay. Um, I wasn't necessarily like disappointed or impressed. You know what I mean? It mm-hmm. just, it it's too early to say. I feel like, okay, you know what I mean. Like it's just yeah. the first. Although I haven't also read all of maybe the lead up that's supposed to be in Batman and a bunch yeah, of other stuff. But, yeah, so I think I gotta yeah, do that as well. So, and the problem is you don't want a ton of that with a series like this. Mm-hmm. Like you want to be able to read a couple issues and jump in. Which I also finally finished Doomsday Clock. <laughs> and how did that go awful, awful. <laughs> no i can i can hands down say and i don't care who argues it that that ending is like a fucking no you know no a lot of people know they all know a lot of people don't like it no, yeah i feel I like there's... a lot of people know and the messed up part is it had actually i was a little skeptical at the start and it had a pretty decent like it was written well as a watch oh, yeah piece. yeah but I think what effed him up was that I bet you anything there was like things that they had planned and that they couldn't do it because I don't even I think they copped out. I don't know what that, maybe yeah, the, maybe their original plan changed somehow. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because you, why did they stop so like suddenly like that? Like, you know, well, and it's then, not even that. For I mean, that a long, how long was it an issue coming out? Like every every other month. So it was, <laughs> was bi monthly. So it's like and, old but school then comics. They even they screwed that schedule up, right? And then they were going like they would do like two in a month uh, in one month, and then like four months with nothing or like okay, this and that. yeah. And I once again I can't comment on so maybe they had some stuff changed or whatever. Yeah. What I will I say like is it AT&T's feels fault. the problem is <laughs> reading it. It feels coherent until the very last chapter. Part. Yeah. Okay. It feels like it's okay. really good, and then you get to chapter twelve, and you're like, what is this horseshit? 
who knows? Maybe Tom King in the next five years will be like, you know, guys, that actually wasn't the real ending. DC made me change it. This is what it was. Tom supposed King to cut. Be. Tom <laughs> King cut twenty twenty five. Like, um, um, no, you know, I, I, I don't know. know. I, and I can't comment on to like the whole series. This thing. All I know is the ending for me personally awful, and for a lot okay. of reasons besides like personal satisfaction, just in like the. I don't know the way things were like played out maybe like some plot holes I feel like are there a little bit and maybe mm-hmm. they've been explained somewhere else where I'm just like me and missed it but it felt like there was a lot of holes in there okay. and then there was another one I finished recently where it was oh I finished the Justice League Doom War stuff like the year of the villain stuff where they're all fighting the new villain Perpetua at least okay. the first part of it did you start the death metal stuff? Yeah, I've and I had actually read that before that, which there were no, there was only like one spoiler. But besides that, there was no real spoiler in it because the connection between them feels so flimsy and like light. Mm-hmm. You, you have all these issues of like prep for like certain things, mm-hmm. and then like they put in maybe four or five issues over here, and it's mm-hmm. like, all right, change the whole story. I know just people are getting excited for just that new character, um, Robin King, which is the one that's yeah, been the, I mean, the death, talk of the, the thing the is, in- Death Metal is producing good characters, but it's also producing a huge amount of, like, garbage. And, like, yeah. people are even, like, in the, the threads I'm reading, they're even just like, can we please stop with just Batman well, and everything? You know, I don't know if this is going to get any better, you know? We didn't talk about this, but did you know what uh, happened at DC, right, in the comic world? I heard the, in the headquarters they let they uh, and this is coming from AT and T supposedly yeah they let, let go they they let go of a lot of high executives in the DC comic uh, that's not necessarily you know, a bad thing I don't know who's being well, left, but... there was there was some important people there was a lot of the comic uh, writers and artists who were backlashing at it saying. I feel really bad for these people that got, oh, and you know, lost their jobs because uh, a lot the, of these people uh, helped them, you know, oh, get yeah. them these jobs. And, you know, they, I don't know. Well, you, a no, lot of it sounds like a lot of these people, you know, just sounds like high execs don't know what they're doing and they're just firing people randomly. Left to right. <laughs> and once again, that's and that, then that another being thing that made me mad was that for. they were trying, uh, supposedly they were trying to buy Crunchyroll. So it's like, Okay, so you guys just let go of all these other people now, and then now you're just gonna go try to acquire another another company that you, like, so you can let go of more employees. Yeah, I know it's it's the whole don't get me started on corporate stuff for that because it really <laughs> messes up a lot of the art industry in a lot of ways. And now like there's talks about Black Batman coming again next year, and then they're still doing the five G thing. Uh, I don't know. They're I really don't know what's going on. The only person they didn't let go, of course, was Jim Lee. <laughs> I will say and that was he oh, stepped man. down from chief executive, I think, and now he's I forget what his new role is. Um, I don't know. It's probably some facilitator role or something, so they can keep him out of stuff or keep him in. I stuff. mean, who knows? Yeah, so that was kind of the big talk of uh, when we didn't have our show the other yeah, week. Yeah, I did. That, I, that was even actually before we didn't have our show. I think that had. I happened. think so. I think it was kind of trickling in right after. But there was um, news that just didn't like for some reason because I'd heard about it and they're like AT and T is laying off a shit ton of people, including DC. And it's like, oh, well, who are? I don't think we knew who was getting laid off until like a couple mm, weeks later. Ago. Yeah. So. But I mean, it, and once we'll again, see. it sucks we'll that go. everyone loses their job, and hopefully, like you would hope, they fired the the people who weren't doing good things. But it sounds like from the community that that's not the case. They, yeah, there were some, yeah, people that were loved in the, you know, in the DC comic world. So, I mean, yeah, kind of sucks. Well, and but... we'll have to see because there's always, you know, two sides to every story. I I keep thinking of the oh. recent one with uh, the people uh, with. I can't remember the actor for Cyborg, but he was, and he had oh, already bought Josh Whedon. Well, it wasn't yeah. just Whedon, but he then had done another post on Dan Didio. Oh, who really? Who's lead Dan Didio for, again? He was the creative lead for DC at that time. Oh yeah, 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 Dan D. Yeah, and they let him go like just a few a months years, back ago. Yeah. Uh, no, like a yeah. maybe a year ago, I think it was, because I remember making something about it, and then he got let go not too long. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh. 
Really? So he says the same thing about him, huh? He was saying some different things, and the the problem was there were no corroborations this time. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, February. So it wasn't about a year ago. Yeah, he literally just got let go because he was um, and people thought he got let go because he was the one that was doing the lead way of this five G thing and doing the same thing Marvel was doing, you know, with like kind of switching characters with other newer yeah, generation characters. And, and I don't <laughs> and I don't mind them obviously switching Dio out. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, it's the same thing of where like, all right, with uh, with Whedon, there's been like a history of him maybe not being the best dude. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, not too far heard. to accept. But Dio has pretty much been universally mm, loved. He's loved. Yeah, he's been he, a lot. When he lost his job, people are like, they no. were pretty angry. At it. Like, I don't keep track of people on either side and i knew who dan didio was you know what i mean so he has a little bit and that's not to say he's necessarily a good guy either but it then comes into question when he, the same guy bashing whedon bashes this guy with nobody else coming out to bash didio it's kind of the whole thing with uh james gunn where he had the whole yeah. but he rode through the storm nobody made more accusations nobody you know what i mean he's not involved in anything wrong so he's back and in the he fold. admitted that you know right or he, he said even he apologized was wrong. way yes. before he even oh, got yeah. committed exactly to it. <laughs> which is a and i think that's one of the biggest differences for james gunn which once again i'm happy to admit that i that i was wrong at that time for anything that was going for that because he he is a stand-up dude and i'm glad that it's come to light in re- time since then that there's nothing going on you know what i mean it's not like mm-hmm. with certain cases where it's like oh this person you know and you can cite numerous numerous cases granted it can mm-hmm. be considered bad wagging etc but there's something to say when like 30 people are like yeah that guy's an asshole yeah yeah you know what i mean it's it's no longer just like one or two people but for mm-hmm. him it really was just like now nah, he just made some dumb jokes on the internet a couple years ago and people nah, yeah, left up and once yeah, again, it's, young and dumb. Yeah. And once again, I think apologizing was his biggest uh, power move. Like, mm-hmm. and not to say he did it because it was, you know what I mean? I'm sure he apologized because he meant it. But apologizing yeah, yeah. and owning up is much better than deflecting, saying, oh, it's not that bad. Or, you know what I mean? He's just like, mm-hmm. yep, yeah, sucks. And once again, because of it, now he's back in the fold. He's doing Suicide Squad 2. He's doing Guardians <laughs> Oh my 3. gosh. All those oh. people that are going to be oh, playing dude, villains. Dude, how much money do you think they spent on this movie? <laughs> are they going to make any money on this movie? I don't know, bro. I, John, I, I, love, like, <laughs> I love James Gunn. And I, I want, contrary to what people might think if they see our videos, I want DC movies to be good. I want them I to be too. better. That's my thing. I want them to be better than i think they currently are and that's just my opinion some people love them obviously but I, you know some... what i want i want to have marvel to be good and i want dc to be good because i want to go to see a marvel movie and they have their own thing doing i'm like yes. okay i love that and, and then, then i want to go to dc and i'm like thing, yeah. okay but i really i love what they're doing over here too and that's cool exactly and, and it shouldn't be too much to like i once again you got fanboys on either side who will make it awful for everybody but you know, any any real comic reader reads both sides at least a little bit. You know what I mean, and probably yeah. some third party titles. Mm-hmm. I mean, who hasn't picked up an issue of Spawn? Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm sure there are people, but the, the yeah, point... he's, he's been popular this uh, yeah. last couple of months again. Yeah. Oh, my brother was trying to get a copy of 300, or his girlfriend was trying to get him a copy of 300. And I was like, no, you got to be on, you got to be on McFarland's fucking mailing list. You got to be on. <laughs> I was Those like, you gotta be fast. up yeah, on it. Three hundred. Um, so she just got him some figures. Uh, oh, nice, some of those nice, nice. Oh, oh, okay, cool, cool. Oh, did they know about the Kickstarter he did a couple months back? No, they don't keep up on stuff like that. Like once again, she just did it because it was it's his hard birthday. Just to you, keep once again, you ha- going oh, on. Dude, once again, I spent like how however many hours just either yesterday or today reading through these comics to try to catch up on Justice League. Try to catch up. Now I got to go through Batman. Now I got to go through all the Joker stuff. I got to see, and obviously I don't read everything and I can't read everything. I do want to go back and like, I have a couple ideas for shows to do. One of them is the whole versus thing. Cause it gets to me on a lot of characters mm-hmm. and people where it's just like Merman Erms, you know, one punch Superman. I was like, look, man, I like one punch man, but he has <laughs> not showed anything that would suggest that he can do that. I just, I can't take him serious. Yeah. He's just been written to be a parody, you know? I mean, he is, but that's the same as Gwenpool. Yeah, that's very true, too. <laughs> well, And once again, it's an example of how it's it's personal taste, right? Yeah. 
Because it's the same concept. I, it's just how it's executed that I, is You know, different. and I, I don't, I don't know why. I just enjoy her character. It's just, and and it's know. the same for me. It's not. It's this. It's like I said, I, I try not to harp on it, but it's the same for me. But the opposite. It's like I can't. As much as I like, like I like her costume design. Maybe but, that's it. I don't know. No, nah, I, I mean, know. there's other things about there's other things about her that I enjoy, but I think it's her overall uh, presence in the comic reminds me of kind of. She reminds me too much of Squirrel Girl for some reason. Okay, I think it's her yeah. personality more than her abilities that gets to me. Yeah. Well, you know, I think too what what didn't help was that they kind of really didn't know what to do with her character. Yeah, she's. I feel like they just she added, does better. You know, the whole comic book she can go in, out of the comic and yeah. stuff kind of just like was just added randomly. And I feel it didn't like feel organic like, to me. I feel like they had it and it was like the whole concept with the character and they just didn't build around it. It sounded good at the beginning, but then no, it No, I mean, it was a cool good, concept, bad. but I feel like I feel like for her, it's exactly the fact that she's a concept character where it's like this character knows she she's a fourth she's, wall breaker. She knows yeah. she's in a comic book. And then they, they were like, all right, well, that's that's good enough. Just throw her in there, which a lot of the times <laughs> it is good enough, right? That it's yeah. a good to be a zany wonky, but sometimes you want story depth or character development, which I'm sure oh, yeah. she's received in the times since her original appearance. There's I, a couple. There's a couple, yeah, issues. And but I really that's... enjoyed her actually. Now that I think about it, as a supplementary character and like other people's comic books. Oh, she does really good. Like West Coast Avengers, she was. I want to. I still need to read one. West Coast Avengers from this last run. The one I saw her was when she appeared in West Coast Avengers in Superior Spider-Man. That was the one oh, I remember enjoying yeah, reading because she's yeah, like yeah, harping. Yeah. He can't accept the fact that we're B-list characters. It's like, see that's it's because she knows all the history of all these right. characters too and that's it's really funny hilarious that oh, she yeah. can cop on their their stuff but yeah i mean yeah i mean if you were probably to rest, read west coast avengers you might like that one that one was kind of like uh they were trying to do like a uh real world kind of tv i avengers heard that was thing. i think i did read the first one and that's why i popped off it for a bit because i was like this is a little too uh real world for me and it's not to say it was bad. It was just like I had to wait and see how it went, and I just never checked back on it because of it. You know, stuff. I think what kept me was the uh, Jeff the Land Shark. <laughs> you the, see uh, stuff like that. I, I and I like stuff like that when it's done in certain ways, right? Like when it's done tactfully and and impressively. So like, mm-hmm. you, and I'm sure they do or you know do stuff like that. But there's some times where I feel like the writers get lazy with stuff like that. Yeah. But once again, I gotta sometimes get past some of those first issues because, like, sometimes, sometimes it gets better after yeah, it a while. Does. Yeah, if there's a couple of comics I can think of. I have most of the new Hickman stuff is, but then again, that's Hickman all around. Like, Hickman just mm-hmm. gets better the more of the stuff in the yeah. run you read. I still need to catch up on all that X. Dude, there's stuff so I'm much X Men. To be fair, a lot of it is kind of like ancillary stuff where you don't necessarily need to read all of it because mm-hmm. it really is this like super expansive. Uh, yeah, he's really – it sounds like, yeah, he's going for, like, a whole new world building I, of the I'm X-Men. I'm not sure exactly where he's going because some of the threads, like – but I think that's how he works very and well. And they have really, coming out, right? The X of Sword or something? Sword of X or something? X it's Sword? Be coming out this October, I, I, I think. I don't even know. And I think another big problem is all his stuff got derailed, obviously, by coronavirus. I think a yeah. couple titles – actually, most of his titles, I think, got kept on, but – yeah, most of like I know, Fallen Angels was ca- replaced though with um, yeah, that one wasn't canceled. Aliens. It was finished, I think. I think that I one think, finished. Oh yeah, I think it was Cause finished. Because yeah. that one and the, there was another one I can't think of uh, that were just six runs or six comics. I can't remember what the other one was. Uh, it was the one with not Psylocke, but the chick whose body is my that Psylocke's yeah, that mind Fallen, doesn't have. Fallen Angels. And that's the one. one that got to six. Maybe that was the only one. Maybe because that's the one I was thinking of. And then they added Cable, and then they added X Force, <laughs> and then they, and then what the replace or not replace, but then they added the Hellions or Hellions. Hellions, and then Hellions. there's a uh, Cable got added. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I heard Cable's been pretty good. Uh I thought it was all right. It's I think it's gonna be a tough sell because they just totally redid his character. 
So oh, with him being young and stuff. Yeah, and what do you as, think? Should they? Should he just have? I don't know, because then you did that whole storyline with the young Cable, and then it's just like, okay, that none of that mattered now, because we're going with uh, Jim uh, or Jim Jonathan uh, Hickman stuff, and he's now he's old again. <laughs> yep. So we got House of X, Powers of X, X Men, Marauders, Excalibur, Man, New Mutants. Marauders is still going, huh? Oh yeah, that's the one with the Katie Pride one. Yes. The Pirates. Yes. It was a pretty good. It wasn't too. bad. It was. It's interesting how they continue to have these individual stories inserted inside the larger scheme of like all this stuff. Mm. Uh, it looks like Fallen Angels is the only one. Oh yeah, no, this one. For, huh? This one might be. This one. There's a couple of these that are either not out yet, or they're not gonna finish. Hellions X Factor. That was the other new one. Oh, and, okay. and they started a new Wolverine run. Oh yeah, that Which, one's slowly starting to come out. Yeah, it's all right. Children of the Atom's supposed to be coming out soon, and then that X-Force. one's still coming out. I thought that that one no, was not coming out. No, it's just to be announced. It hasn't been huh. hasn't been canceled yet. So okay, maybe it has that one. Then they did all the new Empire stuff. Because I know a lot of books got canceled, like in the Empire stuff. Like they canceled a lot of Empire books. Uh, I they did, but I don't think they canceled the X Men one. Cause it's still going that one yeah still going yeah that uh, one's uh then you yeah. got a couple of one shots coming out or that came out yeah <laughs> which i didn't read some of these i guess or maybe they were collections i can't tell but the, then you got x of swords which is coming out yeah that's later that new this month out. yeah then you got uh there's one thing uh juggernaut juggernaut's got his own thing coming again september should be fun Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm I, yeah. I like Juggernaut. Yeah, I think I have that on my list. Um. Yeah. Shit. I, don't even... I have to look because there was a Mega Man comic that came out that <laughs> I wanted to read. Um. There's a yeah. There's a few things that came out that I need to catch up on reading. There was um, there, there was something else that I was. Oh, I finally got through all the Umbrella <laughs> Academy stuff that's out. Yeah, I was going to start that, but then I didn't start it. And I was like, it's, I'm The messed up part is it's it. super <laughs> short. All the comic runs, there's like six chapters. So there's like 18 chapters total. Yeah, he tries to do like mini series, like the, oh, what's that's his name, amazing. Mike McNola or whatever, because he yeah. does. Uh, his he, stories are like not really like continuous. It's like they're all, they're all over the place. He even had to come out with his own, like, uh, when they did Hellboy Day, they yeah, came out they, with like this. A timeline for uh to tell you exactly the reading order of the hellboy series so that's like wow yeah that there were a couple other good series i gotta read that one there are a couple other good series uh you still need out. to read something killing the children if you have not read that did one did i not start that one no i it, didn't but it, i did it read started uh, getting popular just this last month I people are starting to catch on to it i did that read that really one good. but i read uh what's the one falls that they Gideon were, Falls. Gideon Falls. I finally got. To oh, did Gideon you start Falls. reading it? No, nah, I caught up. Oh, you caught up. Okay. Yeah. So, what did you think about the the whole parallel it, I like kind that of universe? Like the whole that well, was because that well, was the epic conclusion. I guess. Oh, is it actually done? I thought it had a little more. No, no, no. It's still going on, but that was it, like the whole. That was like one, the whole right? mystery. You know, they finally. You know, like yeah. well, what's going on? Well, they finished on. Like, they, the first. He talked about he finished like the first volume or the second volume. Yeah, the first. One of them. Yeah, the first. Yeah. Well, it's first just one. in the. It's on the end. One of those things. It's like end of volume one of Gideon Falls. Start oh, of volume okay, okay, two. okay. I think it was like chapter. I wonder what issue that is then. Twenty four. It's oh, basically when you basically. I think it's after because you're caught up, right? Um, I'm like maybe two issues behind right okay, now. Okay, so it's when he. I think it's when he goes when you see the bishop. For the first time. Uh, when he's okay. going oh, forward and back, see, so then you okay, know. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, shit's gonna start getting crazy here now that you capture that issue. Well, I've caught yeah. up past that, but that's the point. Oh, okay, I think where that. the. Okay, cool, I think cool. that's where the season switches is where the bishop comes in and they start going for because then you know. You got you know the mystery, you know what I mean? You finally yes, figure yes. out what's going on, which it was good. I will say that it didn't have a ton of lead up until a couple chapters in. Obviously it was just pretext and like mood setting. Not oh, bad at all. Yeah. But probably yeah. like five or ten issues in was the first time you were getting hints even of what was really going on. 
Mm-hmm. And then by about five chapters till it was revealed, you kind of got the full sense of what was going on. I think it would make on. a really good TV show. like if Because I know they're supposed to go with the TV show idea with I it. i got to remember to add Something's Killing the Children to my list. AMC, yeah, read that one. Yeah, Who's because literally, publishing it? Uh, James Tinney. Oh, uh, Boom Studios is doing it. And Boom Studios has been on their game lately they with They really uh, have. Comics. What else did they have that we were reading? Uh, Folklords was... Oh, Folklords was... Eh, it was good. It started off good, and then they kind of... Eh, I didn't really like the ending. Uh, another one, though, that was good was um, Red Mother, which is another one people have been talking a lot of. They're also doing uh, the Rangers. That was the one you were the, talking about. They're, they just picked up the Buffy, the vampire uh, license, so they've been doing those, and I've been hearing people loving that, that series. I was about to uh, say that even... just came up. Are they, somebody who's doing Sabrina right now? Um, Sabrina is being done by Archie Comics. Still, they have a new issue that's because um, they they canceled uh, the darker version comic, which I was kind of sad. So that one didn't get finished. But yeah, they're just doing this one right now. Okay. And it's it's kind of cool. It's all right. It's like um. It's somewhat kind of supposed to be scary, not too much. I don't know. It kind of, I don't know what it reminds me of too much, but I do kind of enjoy it though. So it's not too bad. There was something I do like the art style. But yeah, Boom Studios has been doing some pretty cool stuff. Um, there were some other books that I've been reading from them too as well. They've got a lot of uh, titles like Mega Man. Power yeah, Mega Man just came Adventure out last Time. week. Uh, the Power Ranger stuff has been on fire with them over there. You've been I talking love... about how it's been really good for the last. Do you, have you started any up. reading of them? No, yet? I need to get to it, but it's just on my list, and I know it there's de- a good amount of comics now. Oh yeah, yeah. There's there's like I know they ish. have. Ra- well, it's not even that. They have side runs, don't they? Yeah, look, like this one just came out this yeah, week. Yeah, Dragon. Last week. I know you were talking about the Ranger Hunter because I saw this that on my it, list. Yeah. Yeah, the Ranger Slayer. I didn't pull, cool. but that was on my list. Was the Ranger Hunter, and I yeah, wanted and to then check Dr- it out. Dracon or Jake? I don't know. Dracon, I Dr- Draconius, Maximus, J- J- Jace, uh, J- or Jason David Frank says Dr- uh, Dracon. Dracon. <laughs> Dracon. Which just sounds pretty cool. Dracon. I like saying it that way. Um, I like Dracon. But uh, yeah, so that's yeah, those Pirate Ranger stuff has been really cool. That like I said, they did a really good job of uh, modernizing it. Um, the first run was pretty good, like uh, the whole like big arc that the first, because now they switched writers now. Um, and then right after he was done, the first writer, eh, it kind of was all right at, for like the, I think maybe seven issues, didn't really care for it. And then now they're starting to kind of roll it back in and it's looking like it's starting to get a little bit better again with this Ranger Slayer stuff and all that. Um, they, they're they introducing like these almost like symbiote kind of looking character villains <laughs> that are being uh, that were like Goldar and some other ones. Um, yeah, it's been cool. It's been a really, really good uh, series. So yeah, for sure. Check that one out. What uh, I know they did Mega Man. I haven't checked that out. So I don't know if that one's good just yet. Um. And like I said, something killing the children for sure. Yeah, check that one out if you can. Said, uh, what else was there? I wanted to read the one DC was releasing, but I hadn't checked out yet. I think it's called The Last God. Oh yeah, I have some of that stuff. I, I you know, it's not really my take, but you might like it. Um, it reminds me of really like a lot of like Dungeons and Dragons kind of type mm. storytelling. They even came out with like a source book of it. Oh, <laughs> so if you want, yeah, you can you can make your own uh, game. <laughs> There's a lot Actually, of money to be made on those modules, uh, man. I've been thinking uh, of making one. It's it's not all that hard compared to some of the other shit. And man, they make a lot of money on those. Uh so, oh, Star Wars released a new Vader run. Oh yeah, yeah and it's that, that's, placed that's, that's, uh, after the end of the second movie. So it's after Luke falls down the whole way. No, oh, yeah, because they talked about Padme in it, they said, in this one. Yeah, there's uh, a whole thing on it. It's interesting. It's good. It's maybe not t- as good as some of the other Vader runs, which is rough to compete with. But Yeah, but I've always heard like a lot, yeah, a lot of this Vader stuff, you pick it up, it's it's been pretty good so far. Yeah, a lot pretty, of the... with, with very few exceptions, if you pick up a Darth Vader comic, it's a good comic book. Like Vader's an mm-hmm. easy character to write. So when good writers get him, it's amazing. A lot of backstory for him. <laughs> oh, well, the backstory and the character, right? Like you yeah. always, you can basically predict with a couple, you know, factors interfering what Vader's going to do at all times. Mm-hmm. Like, and most of the time it's walk in and kill everybody. 
That's what's that being the badass. <laughs> no, it, it, it really is. It's like writing roles for Samuel L. Jackson. It's easy. And he's like, hey, Samuel, can you be a bad motherfucker? But, you know, over here with the lightsaber? Yes, I can, in fact, be a bad motherfucker over here with the lightsaber. And no offense to, to Samuel L. Jackson either. I'm just saying when you... Some characters are easier to write for, right? Like, mm-hmm. I feel like uh, the New Mutants, was, again, was a good example of that, where, like, characters like Magic, easy to write for, easy to characterize, mm-hmm. easy to show who they are in a quick fashion without, like, a lot of effort, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, here's another book from Boom Studios. Once in Future was another one I told you to check I out. That's the me. one that kind of, like, they're about King Arthur, but it's, like like king arthur's like dark and evil <laughs> kind of dark story and there's well, the um, original king arthur story is pretty dark it, but it's it's pretty good it's about resurrecting rex oh, resurrection okay. and all that yeah it's pretty cool um there's about this one son and his grandma and his grandma has like uh she's like a protector of an ancient society and she's trying to keep king arthur from awakening and stuff and all this and he's like a, a, a bloodline to one of the ancient or one of the knights and the the round table and stuff and so he's supposed to be a protector as well and he has no clue he's like a sissy he's at the like beginning no right <laughs> and his grandma's like smacking him around and stuff he's like get <laughs> he didn't... off your ass and <laughs> save the world <laughs> And his grandma, he didn't know his grandma was so G. So he's like, whoa, grandma, who, who are you now? And What and happened? So, and so, yeah, it's just a story about stopping King Arthur. And uh, yeah, it, and um, it's pretty good. You should check it out. It's uh, I've been liking that as well. I think James Tinian's right that, that one as well. Um, other than that, oh, that was another one that just came out that you might like uh, from Boom Studios. It's called Seven Secrets. Um, there was some talk about that last week. Um, that was from Tom Ty- uh, Taylor, who was the one Taylor that did. Um, yeah, I liked his uh, X uh, twenty three run. Yeah, that's uh, what, that's the one I remember. But but he's the one that brought. He does, uh, uh, he's the one that brought the um, the little Gabby into. He's the one who invented yes, her. I guess exactly, say, yeah, he invented uh, Honey Badger. That's the name. So that one's cool. Um, I did read read Immortal Hulk. That one's been kind of getting better again because it was getting stale there for a little bit there. Yeah, I wasn't all that. Uh, Oh, he's also doing DC. That's the other. Yeah, one he's I doing some DC. He's he doing really, all the DC that's right. stuff. They talk yeah. about how good he is at doing post-apocalyptic stuff. He's very and good. He, at he did good. I love well, that he's DC done book. DCs. It's good. He did injustice. Even though it's just kind of like you know Marvel's on, but it's good. He does a really good job of writing it. Because he did the DC. He did. Uh, he did a couple in, of Spider-Man friendly neighborhood Spider-Man books, which was good. He did Injustice. There's a uh, there's a couple ones where he just does like the whole universe if he dies. He did all the all new Wolverine stuff. Mm-hmm. War of the Realms, some of that. Uh, oh, Star Wars, a lot of Darth Maul stuff and Blood Tie stuff. So those Ooh, are some okay. interesting ones. But yeah, I've heard a lot uh, of uh, people give him a lot of props for like his his ability to write post apocalyptic stuff and like really darker stories. Oh yeah, like sh- the those zomb like yeah, it was cool. I like the the zombie or not they're not really zombies. I guess they're just brain controlled zombies or uh, DC. I don't know. They're anti life. They, they made it. A, they, they had a really cool concept. They should have just kept calling them zombies. <laughs> If they'd have done that, they'd have sold billions. No, they did good. It was good. It was honestly very good. I enjoyed Deceased and all the stuff that's coming out of it. I, and I like the new one, the Planet one, now that the Damien has taken on the role of Batman and yeah, stuff and all the, that other stuff. So it's, it's been pretty good so far. Um, Venom has actually been pretty good, too. I actually I did read that last it, week. I haven't read it since the whole Null stuff. Abs- so oh, the like, Absolute Carnage stuff? Yeah. Which yeah, I'm hoping is supposed good. to move into whatever is going on with Noel, which who knows, maybe it'll tie into Black Winter since they're doing that whole blow up with Thor. Yeah, uh, did you catch up on the last Thor issue? Yeah, I, watched, I read all the new Thor and Gallon stuff. What did you think? What did you think of that? Huh? I kind of liked it. It was good. It was good. <sighs> There's just but so much disrespect not everyone for Marvel can stay history. Dead forever, though. You know, it, you know no, he's not going to stay dead forever. It's not even about him being dead. It was about the circumstances of him becoming dead. The whole draining oh. of the power cosmic was really one of my first ones where it's like, eh, this is a little rough, man. Like, Thor, even with the all-father power and the power cosmic, should have a really tough time doing anything to Galactus. But it's literally like a scene. It's just like, give me your power! And then I guess, twice! 
So the I see power that. Of, the, of a storm, right? I guess. Yeah, right? he's like, ah, and I was like, really? That's why your ass is getting beat by Moon Knight right now in the other f- comics. <laughs> I, was re- I was reading those ones too. Those, that's why I picked up a Moon Knight that's, action everybody's figure. Catching I, I love so Moon Knight much, now. Everybody's catching so much smoke. I'm just like, but moon, really, but Moon Knight's like, he's, he, they turned him into a badass of that issue, Avengers. I really loved it. It, it was, was a good too one, much, especially. though. It was, once again, it was something that I felt was so far beyond his power and ability to do from the premise that it was hard for me to get, catch on with the rest of it. He was beating mm-hmm. the Iron Fist on hand to hand combat. I know, that's why I was like, oh, that's yeah. pretty cool. I yeah, was see, like, and I was just like, there's no good reason for this. It would be different if he was like using his superpowers to beat the Iron... No, they just say it in the comments, <laughs> like, no, nah, I'm just beating you at martial arts. It's like, really? Fucking really, Moon Knight? All right, Moon Knight. Yeah. I've seen you get beat up by two thugs in a back alley, but whatever. <laughs> uh, it was just I still too need to much finish for that some run, of the though. first I- steps. And I think that's all I read was just that issue, though. But so, to be fair, one. Marvel and DC Cosmic Entities are just catching these hands from people. Like, DC Wonder Woman had the Stranger locked up. The Batman Who Laughs had the Phantom Stranger locked up or something. It was it was just stupidity and madness in some cases where I was like, come on. I, 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 and it's so much to the point where they don't even explain how it happens they just have to keep it off screen that's how much i feel is like even a couple words here or there but for example the batman who laughs right he's like i in my universe i killed the specter i was like cool Mm -hmm. awesome that's an interesting concept and he's like and i had to scour it was like wait so you're not going to tell us exactly how he killed the specter and give us any believable reason to do it we're just going to get a vague explanation of he found the necessary dark magics to kill the specter (laughs) <laughs> this literally is like i feel like they're throwing their hands up in the air like how did we catch him eh off screen <laughs> and at least marvel's wasn't that bad where it was just like yeah and off screened it you know what i mean at least for thor and gallon people it was like an actual fight kind of and like yeah you know it was, they it was put, pretty cool we got to he got to do like a little he put up a fight but but then I there's mean, other things like him getting hit by the space rock and you know what i mean it's like this this dude is supposed to be stupid powerful right now like stupid ridiculous powerful if he's got all of all of galactus's power from when he was fully charged stronger than he's ever been and the odin force and his regular power he should be really f- stupid overpowered right now. I'm still watching him catch hands. Mm-hmm. And not even from just like Black Winter and stuff. It's like silly things. Okay, okay. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess like I said, there's some people I know that were yeah, like, like love that kind of scene. Kind of was like, whoa. But and then, like you said, it was kind of like, yeah. Once again, what really. I kind of like the concept. I felt like the execution wasn't the best necessarily. But I did uh-huh. like the concept. I mean, I'm not a opposed to thor being that strong or having been that strong i feel like rune king thor was somebody who could definitely do something like that <laughs> but rune king thor was a couple stages stronger than he currently is mm-hmm. uh and in addition i think the it was more of the disrespect for galactus people where it was just like this is galactus galactus is like all yeah. right all right that was the other thing he killed galactus and i still haven't seen a braxis that was my big issue is a Braxis okay. didn't show up, which they've done since, but that's always the one I well, pull up. Let's let's you know, let's just say this. Let's say that there's a good reason that, that this happens and that let's, hopefully Donny hope, Cates can Here's can the write, thing, like, I have faith in, in Donny Cates. Donny Cates is a good writer, so I'm hoping that he has something coming down the pipeline that you know, just like smooths he's everything smart, out. you know he did a good job of like doing the woe factor for some of the people are like whoa that was really cool and then he's also but then he's like just keep reading guys keep reading he said I'm there's gonna, a lot I'm of gonna stuff impress, going I'm gonna on impress yeah. the guys that got pissed off about this and you're gonna you're gonna be like okay you brought me back donnie you brought me back and that's <laughs> my thing is for with very few exceptions, maybe one title i can think of off the top of my head where i wasn't too loud but most of the time I'm impressed with Donny Cates' writing. He does a really good mm-hmm. job at writing the characters. He's usually very consistent with Marvel history. He understands how Marvel works oh, like, yeah. as a cosmic hierarchy, etc. And so he writes good stories. So my, my for this, I'm going with it's just part of the journey. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's going to be something that comes along later. There's going to be some is, ramifications. 
proof of this, which yeah. they already kind of said, right? I think in the in the book at the end. Oh, I mean, of it. yeah, there was already, and there's I been. I think Silver Surfer was the one that brought them up and said, "You know, bro, this is this isn't going to turn out good, right?" Yeah, he's like, "You know, this is bad, right?" Yeah. Having said that, I think you, know you uh, up. <laughs> Oh yeah. But having said that, I mean, I like the Thor run so far. It's just a little bit good, of the. Yeah. Once again, a little bit of the inconsistencies in some places are rough, but besides that, I like the way he's setting Thor as like this really big thing so that he can bring in something else to really challenge him and like do some fun stuff. Because mm-hmm. that's what he's famous for is going outside the box and doing new things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I re- that's why I've been enjoying his writing. He just has been doing kind of like... Like I said, he has been out the box of it, all his stuff that he's been doing. And some uh, people won't. Marvel. Some people won't like me for saying this, but in my opinion, I feel like a lot of some of the stuff DC is doing now with D- Dark Knight's metal and stuff is really pulled from the vein of what Donny Cates is making. Yeah, yeah. Just, no. just his his nature of the abstract cosmic movements. Like, if if yeah. you don't tell me the Batman who laughs with Doctor Manhattan powers doesn't slightly remind you of the Space Punisher with. <laughs> You know what I mean? Three <laughs> characters mashed into one and some. Come on, man. And he ended, no... up, and he ended up being one of the like really most popular characters. Yeah, he's a great character. Last year. <laughs> same with same with the Batman who laughs, who's an exceedingly popular character already. Oh, wow, he's yeah, been really. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's been getting out there now. But I would say um, that that is one of those things where it's like Donny Cates really stepped into a wild realm of comic writing that hadn't been done in a while. Uh, I mean, with that, the Thanos thing in that Thor Thanos thing. Thanos was a uh, real was big... I think Thanos that. was probably the biggest... I mean, obviously, he had good runs before that and stuff. But in Marvel, I think that's where he really broke oh, out. No, I was even talking about in that Thor issue, that big reveal. Oh, that one at the end. Yeah, that was... Well, which, once again, yeah. hopefully ties back in somehow to his original with the run. Because co- the, the right now, the I don't even think stuff. Thanos is alive. No, he's not. That's why I'm I'm curious as to what this is about, you know, because this is a vision that he sees. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Right? It's definitely, yeah, it's supposed to be so, his death. So Yes. So I'm like, hmm, I wonder what Donnie's doing, like, to bring... Well, I mean, if anyone who scoped out Thanos in that panel for even a couple seconds can see what he's sporting in a couple different ways, you know what I mean? The, that you know, I thought was pretty badass. I, I'll tell you that right now. I was like... <sighs> it's... I like it, I don't know why it, nobody ever thought of this before. <laughs> it's one of those things, right? It's... Uh, for me, it's double edged, right? It's a cool concept because it's one of those things that he's good at, which is smashing together two characters, right? For example, when uh, the uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider wields the crimson chains of Sidorak or whatever wielded from Sidorak's oh, yeah. bones, those are cool pull ins where it's like, all right, that's an interesting concept that we can like move in. And I feel like the hammer with the Infinity Stones definitely is one, but in the same way of like, I feel like it was so obvious. That it wasn't quite as impressive. It's like, wait, you're right. Why hasn't anybody done that before? It feels like this is something that should have been done before. <laughs> right. So it was one of those ones that was really cool, but not one that was like the Sidorak one, which was like outside of my like, oh, oh it yeah, like blew yeah. my mind. You know what I mean? And I'm hoping that in that way to get there. Woe wo factor kind of thing for me. No, and it, it definitely had the woe factor for sure. It was, gr- it was good. Once again, the, the little things notwithstanding the series was pretty good. It was just, like I said, one of those things where, like, I'm hoping that he's still building towards some bigger, better reveals that are mm-hmm. more in line with what I expect from him, which is this high, high level. And I can think that's also it, is I high, I hold him on a really high level of writing mm-hmm. and, and delivery. So when it's still leading up or maybe not there yet, I'm like, all right, where's where's the good part, Donnie? Give me the good <laughs> shit. Give me where's the, the good shit. Give it to me. Get it like a drug addict. No, but... <laughs> <laughs> no but it, it's good i and once again i've even from the things see we got to meet him again at a con if we ever get to go to cons again so you know i was interview. really lucky to have yeah uh i think you were there with me yeah when we, we were met, there when we right? talked to him yeah yeah but it was just crazy because that was like right literally before he started getting really no, big and i remember because we were supposed to get an interview done with him and then he got really big and I was yeah like, i don't know if we could contact him anymore for our tiny little podcast <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, we'll see what he, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty good with comics, I guess. Yeah, like I said, I read a few of them. Read Thor. Read what? Well, I guess read the most important stuff that people kind of were talking right, people, about. The, all the talks of the town. So, uh, uh, what was another one that people were talking about this week? Um, there was an. Have you been reading the Ice Cream Man from Image? No, I haven't been reading that. You one. need to read the Ice Cream Man from Image. 
It's one of the best things ever. <laughs> one of the best things ever. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I just want, I slap myself every time for not starting that series when I first heard about it because it sounded really stupid at the time, but it's been really good. It's it's a um, horror kind of anthology. I kind of figured so like, with a name like Ice Cream Man to be horror based. Yes, yes. And so each each one is a different story for yeah, and the writing is like always like crazy different. Even the art's kind of different. But last week I think they came out with like a Dr. Seuss type one. And it was like the talk of the whole comic. Like people are loving that one. Um, even the cover it was like a Dr. Seuss like ice cream man character. <laughs> um, so yeah you should check it out i i've been hearing a uh i read like a first couple issues of it and i i love it you don't really even need like i said to read issue one because each issue is just its own thing um it's just a little so, little tiny stories well, yeah not yeah, tiny exactly. but chapter stories yeah 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 so you which is just cool because i mean comics used to work that way i mean they weren't always connected you know i mean you just mm-hmm. have superman saving somebody one day and then saving somebody else another day and then no so, but yeah, it's cool uh, check that one out yeah i have to check um, it out uh are, we're coming up towards the end of our time oh yeah Do we have any well uh, that's what i wanted to say if there's anything out there Where, have you seen bill and ted just yet no i was gonna go with my uncle so i'm still waiting to go with him you know the only thing that sucks is that we can only go see that the alamo it's not are showing they, anywhere I thought, that was the other thing is i hadn't seen it anywhere else and the alamo there is you only get yeah yeah that's i was the thinking about place. well and then they're very strict on their their things so they don't even have pair seating i think you have to sit no you can exactly. yeah you can do pair seating it's okay. fine um what they do though is from what i was looking at the map it actually yeah. instead of one seat they do two seats uh okay. they can't sit next to you now um and then you have to order your food ahead of time now Shit, when i was doing it, it was like six seats couldn't think oh, it was wow. like, yeah it was a big ass fucking gap so yeah that was the only place i seen that that was doing the because the That's bill and ted nice. one well, I want to go see it. And so I gotta, and I I'm gotta still going to go see it, it, though. I'm definitely going to go have to go to the Alamo and just go see it because yeah. I already told myself. I, let, I, me, let me know. <laughs> maybe I can get my uncle on board because I know he really wants to go see it as well because he loves Bill and Ted. So. And yeah, I, really I, bought a, it, so. I bought an action figure of Bill uh, <laughs> from NECA. They came out with uh, – <laughs> it doesn't look too resemblance of it, but it, it does cool because he's actually – You can't get wearing, the movie resemblance. The, the rights, he's actually man. wearing uh, fabric uh, – well, they, I guess they, they they gave him the likeness. Right, Alex Winter is actually the only one that looks hands down uh, the one that he looks like, but uh, Keanu Reeves doesn't really look like Keanu Reeves. Um, but the, what's really cool is that they used uh, real fabric, so That's he's good. wearing he's wearing his actual um, his Clothing. coat from the movie, and or from the first movie. So he's got his, his like whole little setup. He's got his guitar in there. He, he can actually take off his jacket and, you know, like from the movie, how he wraps it that's around funny. his waist. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty cool. I uh, picked this up. It's I cool couldn't find the uh, um, box is the phone booth. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted that's the dope. two pack, though, because the two pack, I guess, comes with both the figures and it comes with like a little cardboard phone booth so that you can like put them in the phone booth. yeah <laughs> and yeah but uh put the phone booth in the background take pictures with it but uh this is the only one i found was this one so i just picked this up so yeah. that's just pretty cool yeah, at least you got but, the one because uh, we both well, we know how hard it is to get these things on the fucking roof for some of them well i guess since we're talking about action figures we can talk about what was if if anybody's listening you can hopefully still go to your target these just got released today um these were i guess uh star wars from the or, they're coming from the it says right here, transported from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge trading outpost. Uh, these you can only get uh, from like I guess I talked to another Star Wars fan and he said that they were releasing these with like three packs at like the Galaxy stores and like the Disney and Florida resorts at the Star Star Wars lands or whatever. And uh, these came with like three packs with like Obi Wan and Maul and some other characters. And so now they just released these as singles as uh to the other um target stores because target made a i guess a deal with them to do and they had even a whole little cool little nice setup it even says galaxy outpost or whatever and so they had the cardinal um which i guess people said is from the book the um uh, because it looks almost like the captain phasma character but i guess he's supposed to be the predecessor of captain phasma uh, so and that and he's only and this is only the character he has from the book. So I do actually, like, I do remember him from reading though his. Yeah, he's the captain part. 
yeah, Captain Cardinal is his name. His name sounds familiar, so, but I only think I read like one book with him, and he wasn't very. So that was that character. Um, and then they had this one, which I only picked it up because I was gonna do a trade <laughs> to get something else I want. But people are going crazy for this guy. Uh, this is Hondo from, and I don't really know him because I didn't really watch the Rebel Star yeah, Wars show. I didn't watch I Rebels, he, so I don't yeah, I guess he shows up in that one a lot, and he's kind of a fan favorite. Um, and people want him to complete their Rebels uh, line because they just came out with the new one. And then the other one I picked up was uh, this one right here, which is my favorite, actually, is the uh, Mountain Trooper. And uh, this one, I don't think got, the guy was telling me this one didn't get released anywhere. So, like, this concept was like a concept idea that was supposed to happen, like, in a movie or a show or something, but it never got released. So here it is in toy form. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, Star um, Wars always I, finds a way. <laughs> I, I mean, I only picked this up because I really love the head design on this guy. Um, I don't know if you can even see it because my camera's. Yeah, it's different. So I, I like that one. And they had another one, but I didn't pick him up. He was the. Um, his name's DJ Rex. He's the the little droid from the um, the new Disneyland. Uh, ride he's like one of the little controller operators that talks to you in the ride and stuff and all that cool. so um so yeah he, they made a little figure of him too so yeah it was uh these all got released today um there's even more stuff that they had merchandise out there they had like plushies low ewok plushies they had um blankets they had clothing they had um little play uh playing cards that were like the sp uh it was like a special kind of card that's only in the Star Wars, of course. Um, yeah, of but course. It, it was like basically it was you could play blackjack or poker with them because they were just poker cards. But um, it was just the design that they came out, the shape that they made the cards look like. So it was pretty cool that. Um, what else? Oh, they had like these um, mini little droid toys that you can, um, I guess, customize or something if you bought a few of them. And they also had the new lightsabers and some Nerf guns. Damn. So yeah, the, the, all this came out today. I went to about three different targets today looking for some stuff, and uh, yeah, it was pretty cool just uh, looking at some of the target people and uh, listening to some of the other stories of uh, people waiting, I guess, at seven in the morning, <laughs> <laughs> and me just walking in at like eleven or twelve, and like, oh yeah, I found my figures. Um, oh. I guess one one guy said he was a uh, an elderly guy got to one in the morning. I guess he said that some people were going to start a fist fight at one because they were only doing one per uh, one figure per person, and that actually even meant just one figure. So you couldn't like get yeah, a different figure. Different ones, yeah. yeah, you you because it's like nope, you just got your one. That's it. You can't get him and him. Um, so they, I guess they were yelling at the target associate like, "No, you give us what we want now." <laughs> it's like whoa. It's like calm I mean, down, buddy. <laughs> So it was a it was a fun experience today. That's for sure. Getting to meet some other collectors and just uh, finding these little cool uh, figures out here. Yeah, it even has like the cool uh, right here trading outpost. They did a different kind of background instead of the regular black like they usually do on this side. Right. That's interesting. Well, shoot. So, and then they have another one coming out too for October. It was a golden stormtrooper. But other than that, I think. <sighs> That's pretty much it. I mean, NECA came out with some action figures. King Kong figure we picked up. Really cool King Kong figure. Um, the Trick or Treat uh, pack came out too. Uh, you remember from Halloween 3? Yes. The Trick or Treaters? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. NECA, which these have been out for a while, but they just did a re-release on these, and uh, I had to <laughs> pick these up. But NECA did these uh, – three. they did the three, uh, three Trick or Treaters from the movie oh, and funny. so they had all their their little um, the goblin the pumpkin in this it even comes with the, it even comes with the tv so that's that when funny. they get their head exploded <laughs> even the back's pretty cool they put a lot of work into their boxes like even the back well looks the like boxes a, themselves bad. are often considered collector's items yeah so. that's kind of why i don't want to open this but yeah that's <laughs> the problem with being a collector you need two of everything one to open I and one to keep no, that's what i already <laughs> do already that's why, I have to, that's why i had to stop collecting shit way back when it's like i was way too broke to be buying this yeah shit. i start i started doing that too but there's some that i'm like no that one's meant to be kept I'm not going to buy a second one because I'm never going to open that one anyways. But uh, yeah, I know that feeling now. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, so, yeah, that, so there was that. Um, Godzilla figures came out this week. Uh, the last of the Godzilla because NECA lost their license for September. Mm -hmm. uh, Playmates is going hardcore with their uh, action figures. They're not even action figures. They're just toys. 
for the look because they have no articulation or anything on them <laughs> and the sculpts on them are very bad but it's playmates so <laughs> but it's playmates so <laughs> so um the, the, yeah they, they they lost the license for that so they only got like two more figures coming out for this month and then they're done with godzilla um i guess the back to the future Ooh, stuff's coming out too um the news there's the new star wars wave from mondo and the star wars rebels characters just came out um i know marvel legends had some stuff coming out um with their new deadpool stuff you can build your new uh strong guy build a figure uh so there's some stuff like that i'm just kind of going off the list of the last actions figure stuff there was um let's see the last thing i guess was um i guess marvel was hinting at a um Oh, I guess that's the last thing we could talk about is the Marvel is doing Marvel Legends is doing uh, a Venom run for November coming out. So they have the absolute carnage uh, Marvel Legends figure coming out. So he's got the little swirl on his head. Nice. Um, uh, Spider Gwen or Gwenum's coming out. They have uh, Venomized Miles Morales coming out. They have a Morbius wow. 90s figure coming out. Um, and then the builder figure is going to be Venom Pole huge huge venom pool figure <laughs> um so that one's gonna be pretty cool um that's it pretty much it for star wars stuff and action figure stuff i know there's probably a lot of stuff i'm missing but <laughs> um we can talk about it next time yeah we'll figure it out on the next one and we'll eventually we'll get these onto a more organized structure but it feels better sometimes when they're loose with that said thanks everybody for coming to episode 117 of comic convos catch it have a good one we've been bros since way back